You're watching the ACC SEC Men's Challenge presented by Continental Tire. And what a way to get the first challenge underway from Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. Number eight, Miami, off a dazzling run to the Final Four, facing number 12, Kentucky. Both of these offenses average only about 15 seconds per possession. They want to get it and go, go, go. Dave O'Brien alongside the great Jay Billis. Also, Chris Budden joining us courtside in just a moment. Great to have you with us. And this should be a great tempo game. Head on a swivel, maybe first team to 90 wins. Head on a swivel. We're going to need a neck brace after this is over. Kentucky's averaging 94 points a game, Miami averaging 89, and two of the best three point shooting teams in the country. Kentucky making just under 13 threes per game. Miami makes just under 11 threes per game. Miami shoots 46% from three, Kentucky 42. So you'd better guard that three point line, Dave O'Brien, because shots are going up and they're going up quickly in this one. Jim Laranega's team can really shoot at 46% from three, 52% overall. Again, coming off of Final Four, in fact, back-to-back -back Elite Ace, the only school in America that can say that. I know you wouldn't be shocked if they got back there again, Jay. Wouldn't be shocked. You mentioned two straight Elite Eights in Final Four last year under Jim Laranega. The one thing that, that Miami lacks, though, Dave, is size. They are not big. They're, they're five mans, only 6'5", North Chad O'Meara. So rebounding in this game is going to be vital. And for Miami, their transition defense has to be on point and connected. Now on the other side, John Calipari, 15th year at the helm for Kentucky. He's only lost 21 games at Rupp Arena in 15 years. Over 220 victories on this fabled floor. Different style though this year because he's got guys who can really shoot it and he's cutting them loose. Yeah, and they're a team right now with their big guys out. You know, Aaron Bradshaw's not going to be back for a couple more games, perhaps. We don't know exactly when he's coming back. They've got two other seven footers that, that are out right now with injury or eligibility issues. Uh, so they're playing a little bit smaller. And you got to give John Calipari a lot of credit. He's not trying to fit this team into a system. He molded the system around the strengths of this team. And, you know, the most threes ever shot under John Calipari on average was 19.9. Uh, and this year they're shooting 29 per game. He is letting this team go, and I think he really loves this basketball team because he does not have to coach effort. They go after it, and they play hard together. And for more on tonight, courtside, let's toss it to Chris Budden. Thanks, Dave. This Miami basketball team prides itself on playing with a chip on their shoulder. It's that same mentality that the U football team became famous for, and it's translated onto the hardwood. When you talk about these guys, it's one of the reasons they play so well on the road the last couple years. But this will be their first road test of the season. Jim Laranega throughout the week coached with his guys on remembering their hand signals, their defensive communication, because it will be very very hard to hear inside this packed building. But guys, when we watched them at shoot up, they were loose and as chatty as can be. Confident, aggressive, and loose. Those are the three counterparts that Jim Laranega likes to coach his guys with. Sounds a little like Jim too, and the shoot around's over, he slaps his hands together and he goes, it's game time, baby. And let's have fun. He was talking about having fun. And I had a baseball coach that used to say, having fun is doing hard things well. And you win in rough. That is a hard thing. Miami 5 0. Could be the start of a third consecutive magical season for the Canes. That run to the Final Four last year was something to watch. Of course, they were the number five seed. They upset a top seed, number two ranked Houston. They rallied to stun a number two seed in Texas. From the second half double digit deficit, they reached the final four eventually losing to UConn, who would go on to win the NCAA title. Well, UConn was great last year. There's no shame in losing to them. And UConn's great again this year. They, we could be looking at a repeat champion if they keep trending this way. Now, Kentucky expected to be very competitive at the top in a brutal SEC along with Tennessee and Arkansas, Alabama, and Texas AM. And Auburn is also loaded. The starting lineups are coming up in just a moment. They'll be introduced here inside Rump Arena right now. Looking forward to a great one tonight here on ESPN. It is the very first ACC SEC Men's Challenge presented by Continental Tire tonight and tomorrow featuring eight AP Top 25 teams. Kentucky number 12, Miami number 8 in this game tonight. 14 games on our ESPN family of networks. So we've got you covered. Miami 5-0, Kentucky 5-1.
And coming off 118 points they hung on Marshall. That's the most for the Wildcats in the Calipari era. Kentucky making 16 threes in that game. And it hit at least 12 in four consecutive games. It's really remarkable how these teams shoot the ball. They do not hesitate. And that means long rebounds. So for Kentucky, the game plan, Dave, is, is pretty simple. It's just hard to execute. They want to run Miami off that three-point line and make them take tough twos. Protect the lane, protect the rim, but make them take tough twos. And they want to rebound. I mean, they have to rebound, and you cannot foul Miami one because they are really good free throw shooters. And the second thing, they don't want to stop play. They, they want to try to get into Miami's legs. It's not a deep Miami team. Get into their legs, make them use the bench. Yeah, Jim Laranega likely to go only six, maybe seven deep in tonight's game. But he has battle-tested guys like Wuga Poplar and Norchad Omir is a great rebounder and scorer. Nigel Pack, outstanding point guard who also sticks the three-pointer at 39%. He was the most outstanding player of the Midwest Regional. So all sorts of talent on both sides here tonight. And we are at last ready to, ready to go here for the opening tip. And Miami wins that. We are underway. Omer handing off for Poplar. He's making 59% beyond the three-point line. Really remarkable how Wooga Poplar has matured this year into a lead dog for Miami. Being guarded by Justin Edwards now. Got a little bit of size on him. His pull-up pop and sticks it. And that's where Jim Laranega says he has really improved. Wooga Poplar is an outstanding pull-up jump shooter. So you take that three away from him, and then he can one or two dribble pull-up, and he makes them at a really high rate. Now, Laren Eggers says he might be the best at that pull-up jumper in the country. Mitchell with it up high now for the Wildcats. Do a great job hanging on to the basketball. Only eight turnovers a game for Kentucky. Yeah, that's really remarkable with such a young team that Kentucky takes such good care of the ball. Great rebound by Justin Edwards. He just ran in front of everybody from Miami to get that. 6'8 freshman. Mitchell will feed it out. Reeves will not get it from three-point land. Going to be a third crack at it now for Kentucky. Relentless on that glass. Spinning inside and a whistle on the play as Wagner went to the cup. You give up an offensive rebound, especially a long rebound, David. It's so difficult to set your defense again, and D.J. Wagner took advantage of it. Bensley Joseph, the first foul. Miami just won the event down in the Bahamas. Victories over Georgia and Kansas State. They've got all five starters averaging in double figures coming into play tonight. Well, and for Kentucky, D.J. Wagner at the line right now, just a freshman from Camden, New Jersey. He is coming off a couple of great games. Last week was the SEC Freshman of the Year, averaging 25 points a game. And that week, he had 28 against Marshall. And he's a downhill driver. Not a great shooter yet, but he can really drive the ball. Now, most of their freshmen do not look scared. Not remotely. Tons of confidence. Omir backing into that lane. Working on Mitchell to the left and gets it to go. Boy, how about the way he pivoted around Trey Mitchell? And Mitchell's a good defender. He's got in the middle of the floor and went one-on-one -on -one against the fourth-year player who's been to four different schools in his career, Kentucky being the fourth. Poked away on the defensive effort by Poplar. He'll pull up and fire. That rattles in. And there's that mid-range jumper we were talking about. A lot of places would call that a bad shot in transition to pull up for a 12-footer, but he makes it with such regularity. It's a good shot. The arrow taken into the lane. Nice little leader there for two. And Luke the arrow, the 6A sophomore. He is a different player this year versus last year. One, he's bigger. He's 6'8 now. Last year, I remember him being about 6'6. He was brilliant against Kansas. Had 16 points, I think it was 13 rebounds. He was everywhere against the Jayhawks. Poplar again. Right now, they can't stop him with that mid range game. Great early trend here for the Canes. Well, the only good news for Kentucky is they're not threes. They are chasing them off the three-point line, and they want to see if Miami can make enough twos to beat them. Mitchell with it. He's really had a settling effect as a veteran guy off the window there. 
He can play the perimeter, facilitate. They love that veteran presence. And maybe the most important player, Trey Mitchell, on this Kentucky team because of that presence you're talking about. He just knocked Omir back, and Omir trying to return the favor, but he got a foul on Mitchell first. That's Mitchell's first. Crowd not too thrilled. Now, Omir with the ball in the middle of the floor, and he's very good at pivoting around if you adjust your position he pivots right around to that left hand now watch Mitchell in the low post he just discards Omir and is able to get an angle with the left hand Omir returned the favor on the other end it looked like an offensive foul but I think they got Trey Mitchell hitting him first Omir more contact again that is an offensive foul no basket that'll go against Omir his first he can't believe it well, it's a primary defender, so I think after the bumping and grinding those two had done the last couple times down, the referees decided to blow the whistle on that one. But that's one where Amir can't afford to pick up cheap fouls. He's got to stay in there. Averaging 16 points, nine rebounds, series contender for ACC Player of the Year. And that was a smart sub by Jim Laranega. Take him out so that he doesn't get in a, a shoving match with Trey Mitchell and pick up a cheap one and get two. He will not be on the bench very long. Wagner. Mitchell here. What a pass. The arrow a little slide there. Now slides away and hits it. And that's a great weak side cut by Adu Thierro. And what a find by Trey Mitchell. So an 8-8 eight, eight start. And Kentucky not really out in passing lanes. Just trying to pressure the ball and stay between their man and the basket. Pack on the baseline. Denied on the defense by Wagner on the outlet. Kentucky gets it to Reeves. And Antonio Reeves strikes. He's averaging 19. I and mean, that's Kentucky basketball this year, Dave. The arrow with the rebound, the quick outlet, and the pass ahead. Transition defense at a premium. Oh, my. Poplar sailing down the lane to slam it. Look at Poplar's only 6'5". But he is a pogo stick athlete. He leads Miami in scoring, three pointers, three point percentage. He's just having a spectacular season for Jim Laranega. This place is absolutely deafening. Well, they've had a lot to cheer about this year. This is a fun team to watch. And when they get their big guys back, Kentucky's going to be even better. This is the way to quiet a crowd, Dave O'Brien. Go down the lane, right down Main Street. Yes, sir. The game ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. Jay Billis, Dave O'Brien, Chris Budd with you. This place is rocking, and as we mentioned, pretty near deafening at Rupp Arena. Well, they got a lot to cheer about. Now, watch Matthew Cleveland here with Trey Mitchell in the middle of the floor. He gets a little bit too high, and Adu Thierro sees his head is turned, cuts to the basket, and what a great find by Trey Mitchell out of the middle of the floor. And Trey Mitchell averages almost four assists per game. When he has the ball, he can find people, and he's one of the few that can see over the top of a defender at his size at 6'9". He's an undersized five man, but he's going up against an undersized five in Norchad O'Meara when he gets back in the ball game. O'Meara's only 6'5". Reed Shepard lines it up and knocks it down from three-point land. He is now 15 out of 22, Jay, from three. I mean, he came in at 67% beyond that line. I think Reed Shepard is the most complete basketball player on this Kentucky roster. An excellent defender, very smart, and he's a guaranteed two, three steals a game. Poplar again, and this time he'll draw the foul by Shepard. As he tried to slow him down, Poplar already has eight. Look at his jumper. Well, he is the son of not only Jeff Shepard, but Stacy Reed, who was a great player here at Kentucky, and that's about as pretty a jump shot as you're going to see. His shot preparation was excellent. He was ready when the ball arrived. Stacy scored a thousand points. She was an outstanding player too, as you mentioned. The other thing about Reed is he's only turned it over eight times. So these freshmen are not playing. Most of them are not playing like freshmen. 
And for more on Reed Shepard, let's go over to Chris. He grew up coming to games for as long as he can remember. You mentioned his parents. He was the guy that was waiting in line for autographs. And now he's that guy. The other day he's doing a post-game radio show. They were kids waiting for pictures of him. He goes, it's so surreal. I was one of those guys that grew up wanting pictures with Carl Anthony Towns. And, and now these are the kids that want my picture. It's very real. I'm going to stay to shock because Uga Poplar never misses at the foul line. And he had been 13 for 13 this season. A pull up here by Cleveland. Matthew Cleveland, the transfer from FSU, comes in with 17 and 5. He made a big difference for this Hurricanes team. No basket of foul before that. That'll be on Joseph. And this is back to the days when he was just a 11 year old with Carl Anthony Towns. Doesn't look a whole lot different, Reed, at this point. Only now he's 6'3. Yeah, maybe a little bit bigger. Same haircut. We're watching him in shoot around today going around the perimeter of the three point line. He just didn't miss. Very mindful of watching J.J. Redick years ago do the same thing. And every shot was bottoms. Well, this whole Kentucky team can shoot it. Yeah, you, years ago, you might have gone to a practice. They need to repaint the rims, but not this team. Reeves will draw the foul underneath. Rob Billing uh, Dillingham also into the game, the 6'3 freshman, and O'Meara with the foul. We're talking about Stacy, you know, feeling every moment watching your son play. I think it's more agonizing for the parents than the players. And both Stacy and Jeff played at a high level, and they've probably never been more nervous. I think their son's got it, though. He doesn't. He doesn't need to worry. Seems to be just fine. Reeves at the line, 87 percent. Back to Chris. Reed told me the other day he was having some trouble. He said, "I just, I didn't feel like I was myself." So I called my parents, and they both came into the gym, shot with me for 45 minutes. You're going through that freshman tough time. You just having them here, but also being able to spend that time alone with them on a gym, working on my shot was everything to me. Maybe you just needed rebounders, Chris. Kentucky surging into a five point lead here over Miami. And Rob Dillingham into the game now. He's instant offense, but he does a great job of putting pressure on the ball as well, making it tough for Nigel Pack to get up the floor. Another Wildcat who shoots like 50% from three point land. Here's Poplar again. To the deck, got it up there, and draws a foul too. That was with five on the shot clock. As he's hit by Burks. And tonight, another featured college basketball matchup, ACC SEC Men's Challenge. The Clemson Tigers taking on number 23, Alabama. That's at 9.30 right after our game. Alabama has Grant Nelson coming in as a transfer at Clemson. P.J. Hall is leading the ACC in scoring, coming back for his senior year. Rolls in here for Poplar, once made 169 out of 175 foul shots in practice. So don't foul him in practice. Another one coming, 14-01 to go, first half. And he's cold at the line here tonight. He'll figure it out, but I think Antonio Reeves did a good job on him, getting him to drive the ball, even though he was fouled. You just want to make him take a tough two near the rim instead of fouling. The arrow in the paint with the left hand. What a free shot. Well, he caught it on the run, Dave. That makes him a quicker player. Kentucky will run a lot of dribble handoffs or that dribble drive motion type stuff. And when he catches it on the run, it is tough to stay in front of him. Keyshawn George, a freshman at 6 8 into the game from Miami. Popper again got it where he wanted it. Rebound knocked away and controlled by the Cats. Now Matthew Cleveland was right there, but Adu Thierra just took it away from him. Like Keyshawn George, you mentioned, he, he looks like Anthony Black out there. He was 5'11 when they started recruiting him. He's like 6 8 now. And back over to Miami it goes. Now the Canes losing ACC player of the year Isaiah Wong and all ACC forward Jordan Miller. But adding the talented Matthew Cleveland from FSU who actually beat them with a buzzer beater playing for Florida State in February. He did. They were I think Florida State was down like 24 in that game came back and Cleveland hit the game winner and then he gave the upside down you 
uh, after he hit it. Well. And when uh, Jim Larnag and his staff started recruiting him out of the portal, he said, this isn't going to be a problem, this thing, is it? <laughs> Turned out it's not. Back too strong. Oh. Nearly stuffed in. Maloka going up high. They'll get another chance. A.J. Casey, 6'9", sophomore into the fray for Laranega. Michael Nwoko is going to be a really good player. He is killing it in practice. He just has to translate it to the games. A young player, but very, very talented. 6'10", from Toronto. The officials tonight, Pat Adams, K.B. Burdett, and Byron Jarrett. Checking at what Kentucky is Trey Mitchell. And Mitchell coming back on now for John Calipari. 12.43 to go here in the first half. Just had a shot clock thing. That was a live ball turnover instead of a 20-second reset. So they should have had 30. Now it goes down to 22. Well, they're going to bring both teams into huddles now. Will they take a look at the monitor? We are talking about this earlier. Big Blue Nation awaiting the activation of as many as three seven-footers they have yet to see. And Aaron Bradshaw, who has been practicing, he's coming back from a foot injury. He is by far the closest and maybe real close. Real close. And Aaron Bradshaw, who's 7 1, you know, freshman from New Jersey. And he, you know, Kentucky's got a stretch after they play Saturday where they go five games in about five weeks. And that's going to give all their big guys, but especially Bradshaw, the opportunity to get in, in true game condition. And when these guys come back, all of a sudden John Calipari is going to have size, skill, and he'll have what he's always had here, seemingly, is rim protection. So they can get out and pressure. If you get by the initial defender, you got somebody to wipe it away at the rim. And Yenso got hurt in July. Ivicic, his case more complicated, the NCAA, in the process of ruling if the 7-2 Croatian will be eligible or not. but. They're going to have a lot of size, presumably, within the next several weeks, even if it's just Bradshaw. Heavy traffic, and Edwards got it to go, and a foul. Justin Edwards, the 6'8 freshman. Not sure how he got it to go. Well, Justin Edwards is a lefty, and this is what he needs to do more of, and that's attack the rim. Goes right into Nwoko, draws the contact, and still able to finish it with that left hand. It's a terrific play by Justin Edwards, who still hasn't, in my view, played his best basketball. You know, he's a McDonald's All-American. He's averaging about 10 a game. But he's been on the perimeter quite a bit, and I think he can be much more effective the more he drives the ball. Calipari says he's learning. Poplar with a kick out. Here's George off a nifty fake. Over the top, and Walker couldn't handle it as he went for the alley-oop dunk. And a tie up on the play. Possession arrow will take it to the other end. Boy, a near perfect play for Miami. The great shot fake by George gets into the lane. You help up, he just throws it up. But Nwoko just couldn't handle it. Mishandled it and turns out to be a Kentucky, Kentucky turnover going the other way. Now Kentucky on a 15 3 run. To lead it by eight and the ball. Gonna watch Dillingham here. Jeopard all the way through will kick. Long one on the way and off the iron. That was a little roar of place action. Dillingham was wide open up at the top of the key. Edwards could not connect. George off the window, no. Mitchell, nice save. Well, Kentucky has defended really well on the, some of the pick and roll action. Dillingham got a good shot. Oh, oh and a tip by Edwards. He came out of nowhere. Essentially came out of the left corner. Nobody put a body on him, and Kentucky, their effort has been truly outstanding on the defensive end. And that gets them out in transition, and it is tough to block people out in transition. Edwards coming from the left side with the right hand this time. He's amphibious. <laughs> Terrific atmosphere, great place to be tonight here, Rupp Arena. Kentucky on top, 21 to 11 over Miami. This was supposed to be the debut game of the season for our great and beloved colleague, 
Dick Vitale, the voice of college basketball, unable to do so after recovering from vocal cancer surgery. And because of all the therapy and all the radiation and the chemotherapy, has taken quite a toll on Dickie's voice. He is not able to work. He is cancer free. That's the best news of all. We know Dickie is watching tonight. Dick, we miss you so much, but our thoughts, our prayers are certainly with you and hurry back to work. Love you, Dick. And thanks for picking up the check last night at dinner. It was delicious. <laughs> Uh, you're still very much on our mind. Now, with a $100 donation to the V Foundation for Kids Against Cancer, you can win a chance to watch an NCAA tournament game or two with Dick Vitale and friends at Dick's home. That's down in Florida. What a spread that is. Log on at v.org slash super16 for a chance to win. Dickie, we will see you soon. But Dave, that's not Dick's house. It's Lorraine's house. Oh, that's no lie. kind enough to let Dick live there. From the corner, George getting involved. The freshman knocks one down. And that's one that Miami desperately needed. Desperately needed. They started out five of six, and they were O of their last six before that shot went down. So far, so far, Kentucky's winning the battle of the paint. You know, They're getting it into the paint. That's what really Miami needs to shut off. Mitchell's got a good look. Won't drop for him. Deshaun George getting some good minutes now for Laranega. He'll fire it up again. Can't drop this one home. And a scrap for that. Miami's got the arrow. Boy, Keyshawn George going to be a good player. He is really talented. Yeah, born in Switzerland. Played for the Swiss under-19 FIBA team. The Miami coaches love the high basketball IQ. Very athletic, very quick. He's got that Anthony Black hair. Spectacular. Oh, what a play. Poplar denied. He draws the foul. Defender at his back turn. They're running a little screen for the screener action in the paint. And Wooga Poplar just threw it off the back of the defender in order to get the ball. Wooga Poplar is having a great year. He's averaging over 18 a game, top five in the ACC in scoring. But his efficiency is off the charts. Shooting 51% from the field, 59 coming into this game from three-point range. And this game, Dave, you pointed out, the first free throw he's missed on the season, he was perfect coming into this game. Naduth the arrow with the foul. Poplar 59% from the three-point line, number two in Division One. That his head coach says he might be the most gifted athlete he has coached at Miami. That's saying a lot because Jim Laranega has built a fabulous program. And they're slicing in. Top move there. But a freshman from Camden, New Jersey, right to the cup. Just went off a little fade screen off the elbow. And he's looking to drive it at every opportunity. You have to make him shoot it. You play a driver, make him shoot. You play a shooter, make him drive. Pretty simple. George to the baseline. Leaves it off and a block there by Mitchell. The arrow tosses that one away. Kentucky coming in, averaging 94 points a game. Now watch Wagner coming off this little fade screen by Antonio Reeves. Catches it and he's immediately ripping through to drive it. And that's when he is at his best. Putting the ball on the deck and getting into the paint to the rim. And, and that's gotten him to the free throw line a little bit more, Dave. Last two games, he shot 15 free throws, and that was well over what he'd done the previous four games. Pack using the glass very high on the window. So under 10 minutes to go here at Rupp. And another sloppy turnover. Been a couple of those here for a team that doesn't do that often. Yeah, just a miscommunication. If you're going to go back door, you just have to go. You can't dance out there. Tomorrow, another two featured ACC SEC challenges. Number 10, Tennessee at Chapel Hill to go up against number 17, North Carolina at 715. And it's number seven, Duke and Arkansas. The ESPN app will have all the action as well. You've got a very busy week. You're heading to Fayetteville after this one for Duke, Arkansas. And I'll tell you what, North Carolina better be ready for a physical contest against Tennessee. Kentucky fans know all about that. Rick Barnes has an excellent team and Dalton Connect who transferred in from Northern Colorado has been their best player. Got it outside for Watson and he'll drill that. Christian Watson just off the bench. I think that might be the first three that Miami's hit. 
and did it off the, the little penetration. You just can't come off a three-point shooter. You have to recover. They're not worried about a tough two. They're worried about open threes. 10-2 run. Timeout. Back in 30. Welcome back. For as many years as Jim Laranega and John Calipari have coached, they've never coached against each other, but Coach Laranega has coached in this building. Take you back to 1988 when he was the head coach at Bowling Green. Came into this building and beat the Cats 56 to 54. It was a two-day tournament. The next day, they go on to lose to Arkansas State because you don't remember? No one showed up to stay for that game. Turns out Cats fans only want to watch the Cats play, and, and Billis was reminiscing on the short shorts back there in the late 80s. They were, they were very popular, Chris. <laughs> I think they should make a comeback. Downright indecent. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be arrested for indecent exposure wearing those now. But Miami's played here before, too. They won here in 2008. I think Billy Gillespie was coaching Kentucky at the time, but Jack McClinton had 23 points in that one. The Canes came away a winner. Got to get a shot up here, long distance, and that'll clang away by Wagner. So Miami with a chance to tie or take the lead. And now with O'Meara back in the ball game, you know, he can set screens out top and roll to the basket. Pretty well defended by Kentucky. Kentucky puts great pressure on the ball. DJ Wagner, Rob Dillingham, they really get into the ball, make it difficult. You're thinking about them rather than running your offense. Sweet touch there by O'Meara, way downtown. Just coming off 23 points against K-State in his last game. He went to the combine. And Jim Laranega is encouraging him to shoot when he's open from three. It takes a little bit of time to wind it up, but he can make it. Mitchell from the corner, airmail that. Pack wants to push it. Cleveland lines it up on the wing. And those are crushing. Uh, in half court uh, defense, Kentucky's running them off the line. Tougher to do in transition. Edwards quickly down the other end. One and done, though. Open man and a slam by O'Meer. John Calipari is not happy. After that miss, there was no urgency to get back and just give up an easy basket in transition on a two-on-one with a pass ahead. 29-23. This is 18-2 run for Miami. And that's why Jim Laranega took out O'Meer. Don't let him get another foul, and he's going to reward you when he gets back in. Jay, take us inside the plate. Well, Matthew Cleveland is a very good shooter. He's a good all-around player, but Miami has been taking advantage of Kentucky in transition. And you'll remember this from last year after he hit that game-winning shot <laughs> against Miami, did that you down thing. And, uh, and when they recruited him, they said, is this going to be a problem? Just kind of joking around with him. But it has not been a problem since he's been in green and orange. You know, Matthew Cleveland adds a really nice dimension to this team. He's an excellent rebounder and one of the better offensive rebounders in the ACC. And he's an improved passer and a really tough matchup at the four spot. 17 a game, too. Drop it down for Mitchell. Reeves gets a good look, but short. Second effort off the window for Reeves, who's averaging 19 and 5. 6'6", six, six, senior out of Chicago. So far in the game, Dave, Miami four of six from three. Kentucky just one of eight. And one of the reasons Kentucky's not having the right guys shoot those threes. Rob Dillingham hasn't gotten one off yet. And Antonio Reeves only has two shot attempts from three, made one. Uga Poplar leading all scores with 11 for Miami. Dillingham, tough shot in traffic. Pass. It's George again. Nothing but air on that one. Well, George is a good shooter. This has got to translate both. He and Nwoko have to translate. And there's Dillingham. He can get hot in a hurry. This instant offense and super fast and quick with the ball. Uh, opened his college career. 17 points in 19 minutes in his season debut. O'Meara on the attack, kind of stepped through, and it's knocked away, and a whistle on the play with 6.21 to go in the half. We got Fierro reaching across his arm. Rob Dillingham, I don't know if his right toe was on the line. It was awfully close. 
It looked like it. I think they counted it as a two, and that seems to confirm. He just had that right toe. Yes. Just barely over that line. But Dillingham in the first half against Kansas, he caught fire and was near impossible to stop. And then got subbed out and sort of never regained that level of heat the rest of the game. Another freshman. Hickory, North Carolina. Ramirez 83% at the line. This is a good foul shooting team, Miami. 83% as a team. Should it come down to that? 31-27 Miami. Back and forth we go. And it's been everything we thought so far in this first half in terms of tempo and a high level of play. And very much a game of runs. Mm -hmm. And now with the ball in the middle of the floor, you can run Antonio Reeves off some screens with wide pin downs. Dilly into the corner. A good help by Norchad O'Meara. Shepard in the lane drops into so he can get that shot as well. Now Reed Shepard has just a complete game. One of the most impressive things, he's a two-way player. And he's a good defender, not the greatest athlete you've ever seen, but really smart in the way he positions himself. Back is knocked away by Shepard and stolen away by Kentucky. And he's got great hands. He averages about five and a half steals per 40 minutes. Mitchell, three-point land, too strong. How about that rebound by Wilga Poplar? He, he's got another step on his ladder most players don't have. He's having a really fine first half in a very tough environment as we approach five minutes to go in half number one. But for the most part, Kentucky has made Miami into individual playmakers, except in transition. Good here, fake. Great fake to get by Mitchell. Went for the slam, but can't convert it. Comes out high for Poplar. And a whistle. If Dillingham grabbed him as he was getting into the lane. Saved a bucket. Dillingham with the personal. Love the family reactions in the stands. Good drive here by Reed Shepard. And just a superior defensive play on the other end. Parents happy. Dad a little more. Stoic a little come on dad get in the game <laughs> Get that man an ice cream cone. It's always like this one parent is jumping up and down Everybody knows where they are the other ones just hey, stay calm stay cool long way to go Well, Jeff looks like he's tied up in knots though. He may be hiding it, but he, his stomach is I'm sure up in his throat right now Miami to put it in Cleveland with a pull up. Yes. Wow. That is not an easy shot. And it was over the outstretched arms of Adu Thierra, who defended that well. Shepard answers with a triple. Well, his shot preparation so good. He was ready to fire as soon as he caught it. Tough drive in traffic by George. He's having a really active first half. And really good minutes coming off the bench. He was due for a breakout. Wagner. He'll draw the foul. DJ e. Wagner on the attack, coming up 28 points against Marshall. And on his back at the moment, Poplar with the foul. And let's see if the freshman is okay. So good in attack mode. He doesn't need much space. And he's downhill, headed to the rim. He's limping pretty good there. Hope he's all right. Co MVP of the McDonald's All American game. And a three-time New Jersey Gatorade Player of the Year. This loaded with talent. And at the foul line, 4.22 to go in the first half. And this is an area, Dave, where I think D.J. Wagner should live this season. That's at the foul line. Hit the deck pretty hard here. Just got his left foot taken out from under him as he was coming down and landed hard. Made that one. Edwards back on and as Wagner hobbles off. And we'll get some attention from the medical staff. And a two point game here in Lexington. Cleveland zipping the pass downstairs. Great defense. Shepard all over it. And guess who? 
And he's already got two steals. I mean, he's guaranteed two steals a game when he gets in there. Woko brought it down, and Shepard just took it away from him. His, his hands are exceptional. Mitchell wants the ball, wants to get closer. Denied and a foul. And Woko trying to defend him. And that's a tough spot to be in when Trey Mitchell turns, just gets that elbow and knocks back Nooko. But you just have to make him take that tough shot over you. So we have a timeout, 3.50 to go. 35-33 Miami. Kentucky finding the open man, the ball movement, and Reed Shepard having himself a game. I'm sorry, Seth. I'm not listening. I've got bigger, <laughs> bigger things going on here on the sidelines. I've got uh, yeah. Rep Arena soft serve. No, that was in the dark. Somebody came by and handed you a gigantic ice cream cone, and then they flicked on the lights. And like 22,000 people are just green with envy, including your partner, including the officials. Yes, the officials came over and said, "Hey, did we get one?" <laughs> The answer was no. Go back to work. Miami by one. And a basketball. Deshaun George. He's got a three coming. Shepard with the rebound. Well, Jim Laranega doesn't want to take away the aggressiveness of Keyshawn George, but I'm not sure that was the shot he wanted to take. Didn't really make the defense move. But Miami is unabashed. Shooting threes. Poplar off the window. That won't drop, but the tip is up and in. And he got up there quick. That was Poplar to get that tip in. Boy, talk about second jump. Talk about multitasking. You just that's what I'm that doing. That's what I'm doing right <laughs> that's now. That's right. Analyzing a major college basketball game while destroying that ice cream. Reeves for Mitchell. Can't hide talent, Dave O'Brien. <laughs> Edwards. Terrific fake, leaning in, yes. And that's the kind of aggressive play that I think John Calipari wants to see out of Justin Edwards. Terrific shot fake and then get right in the body of a secondary defender to get that score. The horn set right now. In Kentucky went on a 17-3 run. They took a 21-11 lead. Then Miami went 18-2 to lead by six. These offenses, when they get rolling, man, and a whistle, they will turn it over. They just stepped out of bounds. It's almost there, Jay. This is this is multitasking, isn't it? Yeah. When the camera's not on, you can't tell that I'm missing anything. When I, truthfully, I just don't care. I've got other <laughs> things going on. That's talent. You're 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 a talented dude. Very impressed with my unselfishness, too. I didn't tell them, hey, bring one for my partner. <laughs> as long as they brought me one. Well, somebody's going to work. The arrow. Drive. Went for the duck and denied. What a block by Matthew Cleveland. Took it right out of the left hand of a Duth the arrow. That was a big time drive. Poplar face. Not there for him. Reeves up for the rebound. And those are important rebounds. The guards have to come down and rebound. Miami getting back defensively. Cleveland going with the save, but can't. And the Cats will have it. Minute 35 before the break. This is a meeting at the summit, and that's a primary defender. It's not like he came over from the weak side. But to be able to get off the floor like that and block that shot, that is a big-time defensive play. Took it right out of the hand of a dude, the arrow. Good job not to have a whistle, too. Great block, 37-36. It's not like that was some weak drive, either. That was a strong drive. Right to the left hand for the arrow. Mitchell, four schools in five years for him. Oh, the slam, getting up quick, Edwards. He rises and finishes in a blink of an eye. And Kentucky surging back in front by one. This is the best half I've seen Justin Edwards play. Aggressive. And looking to attack the paint first, not for his jump shot first. That'll be a counter. Pass. Shepard, another block. Up ahead, Reeves. Yeah. 
Reed Shepard's defense has been on display here in the first half in a big way. And Reed Shepard just makes Kentucky better when he's in the game. That was just a big time defensive play and then the presence of mind to pass ahead for the easy bucket. George will feed it's Poplar. No. Want to push that tempo every time if they can. The Kentucky Wildcats leading by three. And that's the challenge for the U. Get back in transition, set your defense, and make Kentucky play five on five, not in advantage situations. Shepard on Poplar. Finds Mitchell to the paint. Yes, sir. Great pass by Reed Shepard because he led Trey Mitchell right into his move. Beautifully done. So we're at halftime. Now we thought it might be racehorse basketball. Maybe not as high a scoring half as we anticipated, but very, very entertaining. Kentucky leading at 42 to 37. And the reason they're leading has been the contribution of Reed Shepard. Watch, he passes away from the defense and led Trey Mitchell right into that move based on how he was being played. And a big time block to start transition, gets the ball and immediately passes ahead for the easy bucket. Block and assist, assist, Seth Greenberg. Seth, you ought to try that. <laughs> You're watching the ACC SEC Men's Challenge presented by Continental Tire from a jam-packed Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. We're getting set for the second half, Kentucky by five over Miami, number 12 against number eight and looking forward to a great 20 minutes on the way. Reed Shepard had a terrific first 20. Reed Shepard was the difference in being up or down at halftime. Uh, in 13 minutes, he had eight points, three rebounds, two assists, two steals, and a block shot. That's a good line for a game off the bench. But he was plus 18 and plus minus in that first half. The Kentucky starters were a combined plus three. He just makes so many heady plays, that block shot off Nigel Pack. And then the quick pass to Antonio Reeves for the easy score. Kentucky is leading 26 to 10 in the paint and 12 to 2 over Miami in transition. Miami didn't play poorly in that first half. They played well overall, but they've got to do a better job getting back in transition. They need to do a better job protecting the paint and not allowing easy drives to break their defense down. And they need to take some better shots. There were some questionable shots taken in the first shots they can make, but just not at the right time. He did have that 18 to 2 run and grabbed the lead for a while. Kentucky will open up with the basketball in the second half. Tony Reeves all the way through for two and a quick strike to the Cats. And that's what Miami Dave cannot allow is those straight line drives off a simple ball reversal. There was no penetration there. It was just the ball moving from the right side of the floor to the left. One thing you don't see with Miami is any sign of panic on a big drive here by Poplar for two. Poplar now has 15 points. He had seven rebounds in that first half. He did a tremendous job here in Rupp Arena. I mean, talk about a true road game. It's really the first big road game Miami's played. Mitchell wants to get the shot in the air. Sweet touch there by Trey Mitchell, the 6'9 grad. Nowitzki-like. Really fell into the lap of John Calipari. Played over 100 college games, 23 years old. Bob Huggins losing that job at West Virginia. And Mitchell came to Kentucky. The arrow with the personal foul. It'll be number two. Yeah, I think your point on Bob Huggins had Bob Huggins not been relieved of duty there. You take a look at Trey Mitchell just getting right into the chest of O'Meara. And nice little shake to get that little Nowitzki fadeaway. Good curl. Nice job by Reed Shepard to make him take a tough shot over the top. Almir, another really tough rebound. Can't convert. He doesn't miss many of those. One of the best offensive rebounders in the country. Three straight years for Amir averaging a double-double. Reeves will bury that. He's hitting 45% from three-point land. More than half his shots come from that range. And look who made the pass, Reed Shepard. Now Kentucky was just two for ten from three in the first half. Spinning downstairs, O'Meara lost it for a moment. Shot clock's at ten. I think Shepard knocked that away. He has this one. In the lane, he'll lay it up and in. And this will be the largest lead of the contest. 
Well, Kentucky has been excellent in transition. Texas, Miami. Arena. John Calipari's message to his team in halftime is, isn't this fun? This is what you came to play for. He thought his team worked their tails off. The only thing he wanted them to clean up defensively was not taking chances, making Miami hit contested twos. But Jim Laranagan said, we have a veteran lineup. We have to keep them together on the court. No, nor Chad O'Meara only playing eight minutes in that first half. Have to be able to have the veteran presence out there. One injury update. John Calipari told me unknown if DJ Wagner was going to be able to return this second half with that left lower body injury. Yeah, he limped off earlier, Chris, and that didn't look great. You know, throw that one away and right back over to Kentucky. Cats on a 7 0 run. Well, John Calipari's game plan has worked very effectively. Just run Miami off the three point line, make them take tough twos, don't put them at the free throw line. And you know you certainly have to rebound in this game but it's been very difficult for Miami to keep this Kentucky team out of transition picked off by Cleveland well, that is a difficult pass to throw cross court unless you're driving at baseline that's going to get picked off almost every time Poplo working on a 15 point game but gives this one back in transition the arrow outstanding control of the body and he'll be at the line he was taking that initially to dunk it, but he never took his eyes off the rim. Watch when he gets hit here after this turnover. Justin Edwards able to knock that away. Poplar asking for the foul, but never took his eyes off that rim. Your eyes make layups, and his eyes made that one through contact. And a three point play for the arrow, the sophomore from Pennsylvania. And give him nine. Came in averaging eight points a game. So another Wildcat playing very well here on the home floor. Joseph on the drive. And a block by Mitchell. Second effort. That won't go. Omir with a miss, and he won't miss many down low like that. Now watch the arrow here. He never takes his eyes off the rim. Saw it coming, kept his eyes up the whole time. He's on the deck and still looking at the rim. It's like you're looking at that ice cream in the first half. Well, he, his concentration isn't that good. <laughs> still has to work on it. Joseph trying to get the Canes rolling offensively, slapped away, and they're going to get the air for the foul. It'll be number three. And that, that's day one where you don't want to slap at it. You want to reach with two hands and try to tie it up. You're less likely to get a foul called, but give Trey Mitchell a lot of credit. He's done a great job of not going for Norchad O'Meara's fakes around the basket and making him score over the top. Dillingham back on for John Calipari. And a beautiful shot there going in strong O'Meara. On a reverse. Amazing. O'Meara's only 6'5. He is one strong guy out there. From Nicaragua was a baseball player and a really good one. Could really throw it. Here's Shepard. Oh, wide open. That's like a layup for him. He's been the entire three point attack for Kentucky. Well, the Canes in the NCAA tournament were down this road against Texas as O'Meara gets inside and draws the foul. They rallied from double digits down to win that game. Can they do it here tonight? Mitchell with the foul. You give him an angle, just that little foot fake to the middle. Got Trey Mitchell to bite on it. And then his balance was so good, he's able to just get to the rim. And Reed Shepard wide open. Nobody picked him up. And O'Meara having to recover late, but it was too late. He makes number one. Omir, the only player in the country to average a double double the last three seasons. Really remarkable. The Sun Belt Player of the Year at Arkansas State. And makes the pair. And Reed Shepard now being guarded by Bensley Joseph, who's one of the best defenders in the country.
Dillingham finds the shooter in the corner. It's Reeves, but no. Joseph high up for the rebound. He got that off in a hurry. And Joseph just lost it off the dribble. Scooped up by Dillingham in transition and blocked by O'Meara as he denies Reeves with an outstanding play. Nice job to go to the other side of the basket and pick up that foul. O'Meara does pick up the personal. That's going to be number three on him. 57-43. Here and here's a look at our scoreboard tonight. Georgia Tech looking for an upset on number 21 Mississippi State. And Syracuse rolling against LSU 79-53. That went in the second half. And Reeves at the line here with 15.36 to go. I think Miami, Dave, has to figure out a way to get Nigel Pack a little bit more involved. Right now the scoring has been Wilga Poplar and Norchad O'Meara. And that's about it. Good fake. Back for Shepard straight on. Boy, just that little bit of penetration. Shot fake, get into the lane. And Reed Shepard is having himself an evening here against Miami. O'Meara with a turnaround, left it short. Shepard with the rebound. Another really good job by Trey Mitchell. Just making Norchad O'Meara stay between him and the basket, making him take that tough two. Reeves baseline, yes. Nifty move for two. And how about this? Kentucky against a team that dazzled on its way to the Final Four last season has opened up a 20-point lead. 63-43. Miami trying to slow them down. Jay, take us inside the play. Let's take a look at Reed Shepard, number 15. Doesn't get the dribble handoff, just cuts right through. And Bensley Joseph stays in the middle of the lane. There's nobody there. He's in the middle of the lane. Reed Shepard wide open. Norchad O'Meara can't get there. Now in this next one, watch him at the top. This simple shot fake and penetration. Nigel Pack has to help out. And that leaves Reed Shepard wide open for the step in three. Joseph from the corner. No. Kentucky boards. Up ahead, Edwards. Oh, my. The Cats are flying high. Boy, Dave, you missed that corner three. It's an automatic break. And Kentucky is killing Miami in transition. And that was a point of emphasis for Miami. Keep the Cats out of transition. They haven't been able to do it. Boy, everything is falling right. Getting into the leader. He scoops it in. And Kentucky is running away. Here at home. And against the veteran team that's known so much success, this is a stunner. Joseph wants to go in strong for two. And this is where Miami has to show poise. You're not going to get you know, 22 points back in a couple of possessions. They've got to string stops together. Mitchell has it poked away. Scooped up by Pat. Great read by Bensley Joseph. Take that away. Off the fake. Shepard with the rebound. The only thing Reed Shepard did not do tonight was deliver my ice cream in the first half. <laughs> Next time. Yeah, he's got to work on his game. He's still just a freshman. Billingham drives it off the window, but that won't fall. Hurricanes looking for several hot hands right now, trailing 67 to 45 at Rupp. Poplar on the baseline and a foul against Kentucky. That'll be on Edwards. That will be his first. Well, here's our featured lineup for the beginning of December. Friday at ABC, the Pac-12 Championship at 8 o'clock Eastern. Then Saturday, the Big 12 Championship, noontime. And Louisville taking on number four FSU in the ACC Championship at 8. Sunday, the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff selection. Who will make it among the top four? Catch it at noon Eastern on ESPN and watch all the action on the app as well. They'll get Dillingham for that foul. Did you notice that promo, Dave? You had helmet, 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 magnificent hair of Reese Davis. <laughs>
It is a sight to behold. And that's not just jealousy on my part. It's mostly jealousy. Well, I've got a full head of hair, and I think he's a national treasure. And another whistle with 13 minutes to go. Here's Kentucky at 67-45. Let's give you a look at. That's a hair helmet. Helmet, oh, helmet, yeah. helmet, helmet. And then the magnificent <laughs> hair of Reese Davis. To the class of his own. Just spectacular. I think most of his contract is the hair. Back getting it downstairs to the sixth end freshman, Nooka. Kentucky leading by 20, and soon to get a seven footer back. Yeah, maybe three. Maybe as many as three. The arrow back out for Shepard. Rolling Burks. And a foul two. Kentucky can do no wrong. Well, it's just really smart basketball. Kentucky ran that little step up screen in the middle of the floor. It's so hard to get help. And Jordan Burks just rolled right out of it. Now watch this screen. So Matthew Cleveland is going to help on the ball. And that means that Wooga Poplar's got to come all the way over from the corner. You catch him on the short roll. If he catches it and doesn't have it, he can just shoot it to the corner to a wide open Antonio Reeves. Just really well designed and well executed by Kentucky. Poplar with a second, Burks with a three point play. Jordan yes. Burks, another freshman. You know, sometimes, Dave, it surprises me that more teams don't run action out of that middle third of the floor just because it's so difficult to bring help. Now, it's not easy for players to play out of that short roll, make that catch, and then make a play, whether it's a pass or a move to the basket or that short little float shot. Both of these teams came here tonight playing very, very well. Miami undefeated at 5 0. They matched their best start since 2018. The long three not there for Pack. The Pack's not in any kind of rhythm. And coming off uh, just a great game that he had against Kansas State, at 28 points, went 7 of 12 from three. Well, Shepard just about from the logo. He was making 67% of his threes coming into the game. And he has 19. Well, I, I don't see him take many bad ones. Took one bad one against Kansas, but that's it. Foul there on the baseline as Reeves puts a body on Poplar. That's his first foul. Now Reed Shepard makes such good decisions. Just a little handoff. You go underneath, and he pulls the trigger, watches the defense, and makes the right read. Get it? Read. Welcome back. There's a long history of boys from the Bluegrass State that have played here, including Jack Goose Givens, whose jersey's up in the rafters, and how special it is for players that grew up in this state to be able to wear the Kentucky jersey like Reed Shepard is now, having himself a night. We tried to find a list. The list was so long, but we only boiled it down to maybe the top five. Rex Chapman, Rajon Rondo on that list as well. When I talked to Shepard about it this morning, because it's one thing to sit in this building as a kid, watching these guys that I wanted to be. And then that first time you put on the uniform, man, it was chills. It feels like something special. Yes. What a great night for the family, too. I mean, his dad, Jeff, was on two national championship teams here, and mom, Stacy, a 1,000 point scorer on a Kentucky women's team. And look what Reed's doing tonight 19, along with five rebounds. And that's just about half of what he's done. Yeah, he's been spectacular. Reed Shepard has been the player of the game, and it's not close because he's done it in every facet of the game. And you think back to those teams that Jeff Shepard played on. I mean, Kentucky was an overtime period away in 1997 against Arizona from a three-peat. Eleven forty-seven to go here in the second half. Now Shepard turned it over with the pressure of Bensley Joseph. But Kentucky in this second half, absent that turnover, they've been spectacular. I mean, 12 of 14 from the field. That's just under 86 percent. And four of five from three. And Reed Shepard is five of six from three in this game. The rest of the Wildcats, one of nine. Now he'll take a seat and get a great hand. And I think John Calipari is saying, be ready, you're going back in in a second. Wooga Poplar with a pull up pop. 
Amir had it stripped away, tried to win it back. It's loose on the deck. He's just so strong and right back up. Well, you bring it down, and Kentucky is going after the ball. And it's hard to gather yourself to go up strong if you can't bring it down a little bit. Didn't Goose have, what, 41 in the national 41. championship game? Yeah, I think that was at the Checker Dome in St. Louis, if I remember right. It's a long time ago. Yeah. Over the top and up and in, and they're all falling. Reeves sticks another. Remember reading once, Goose said, you know, we ran a lot of different offense, but we decided to junk it because I couldn't miss. And they he, he just got one the off the, I remember him hitting one off the backboard from the corner and went in. He was on fire. What a rebound. They woke up and in for two. And the goes from Toronto, Ontario. And in a recent scrimmage, kind of a blue orange, or excuse me, green orange scrimmage in Miami at 25 and 13 in 40 minutes. Mitchell. Man. Everything falling for the Cats. Now they've got Miami chasing right now, and that's not a position you want to be in. The ball is moving faster than the help can move. And Kentucky is just cutting up the Canes in the second half. Five for six from three in the second half. Joseph gets that one. And Joseph just bounced off Trey Mitchell, and Mitchell did a great job of a vertical, a vertical contest. I mean, all of our preparation and watching both of these teams and practices and shoot arounds indicated this had a really good chance to be a close game, but not the way the Wildcats are just burying Miami right now. Dillingham with seven. 81-55. Kentucky just has so many playmakers. And they've got a number of guys that can go get their own. They haven't had to do it in this game because their ball movement has been so good. Count that, and he'll be at the line. But they're shooting 65%. Absolutely sizzling. But their attack of the paint, you know, they're drawing help and then playing off of it. And it's not necessarily that all these plays are designed plays. They're just making high basketball IQ decisions. The ability to get into the lane, though, I think is one of the things that has been really crushing to Miami. You can't guard the ball. You got to bring help. And Kentucky's playing out of it extraordinarily well. Lomir makes it 81-58, under nine and a half to go. Kentucky really spreading the floor. They've got an open middle because Trey Mitchell can come up and play in that high post area. Yeah, and he could pass it and went back inside him, but a foul before that. He has a career high seven assists, by the way. Just the penetration and playing out of it, fake the handoff, and Mitchell can keep it, but a great job by Rob Dillingham of moving without the ball and coming into the vision of the passer. I mean, Dillingham can really score. And he may, may not be the fastest in a straight line, 100-yard dash for this Kentucky team, but if they if they have to do it with the ball, I think he wins. Reeves with a mid-range. That won't drop. Poplar there with the rebound. And so many of these Miami Hurricanes, they can grab a rebound, start the break on their own, but Kentucky's transition defense, pretty solid. Nowoka. Gave it up. Here's Reeves. Every time Shepard gets it, the crowd wants him to shoot it from about 25 feet. I want him to shoot it. Got the switch. Good pass. Curl in there for Mitchell, and he draws the foul. That's just beautiful basketball by Kentucky. Great pass by Reed Shepard to the cutting Fierro, and he found Mitchell right underneath. The unselfishness has been impressive. Got the switch, not enough pressure. Nwoko gave up the angle, but that was a really nice cut by Fierro and great pass to Mitchell. Momir picking up four, his fourth foul, with eight and a half to go. Look at those assists, 23 to eight against a really good basketball team. Yeah, I think the way that Kentucky has executed John Calipari's game plan has been nothing short of spectacular. You know, the goal was to make Miami into two-point non-paint contested shooters, and for the most part, they've done that. They've kept them off the line for the most part, 
and they've done a really good job of, I think, moving in transition. They've, they're running, and they've gotten into Miami's legs, and that was a real goal for them, was get into their legs, get into their bench. Tip off your weekend with another star-studded NBA doubleheader. First, the Philadelphia 76ers are in Boston to take on the Celtics. And the Nuggets will square off against the Suns. Coverage beginning NBA countdown at 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app. John Wall got a huge hand. He came out a few moments ago, got a standing O here at Rupp. Yeah, when John Wall came to Kentucky, you know, there's nobody faster end-to-end -end than John Wall. But with that great class with Eric Bledsoe and DeMarcus Cousins and Wall, I was kind of old school in my thinking at that time and kind of dubious that we can't win with this many freshmen. And they go to the Elite Eight. Mm -hmm. And they were championship good that, that year. They, they wound up running into West Virginia and Syracuse, if I remember right, in that 1-3-1 one, one zone kind of perplexed them a little bit. But, you know, we saw team after team of John Calipari bringing in all these young lottery picks and winning at the highest level with them. R really remarkable, yeah. the, the teaching job that, that he does with young players. Mitchell sinks those. We're watching them today practicing the Kentucky practice gym, and there are photos of all those guys, you know, in a ring around the court. It's astounding how much talent. Unbelievable. Then all the Sports Illustrated covers, and people yes. don't know what that is anymore. <laughs> right. Omir. And he'll be at the line. That's a lot of NBA money, too. About 14 years, well over three billion. Mitchell picks up number three. It's the GDP of a small country. Yes. And he sinks the first. Just not enough tonight for the Miami Hurricanes. Came in hitting 46% from three, 52% overall, number eight in the country, five and all. You see, they knew they were going to get their stiffest test of the season here in Kentucky. Well, they haven't had many open three point opportunities, and that was part of the plan is see if Miami can make enough twos to beat you. And thus far, they haven't been able to do it. Here's Shepard again. A rare miss out of the corner. Nice spin here by Joseph and around the back. Omir to the paint. Off balance. No. Mitchell came in over the back. And a foul here with 7.41 to go. And he's going to need a moment. Omir with the foul. Reaching a higher octave. Let's go inside the play and take a look here at Trey Mitchell, number four. A lot of coaches would say this is a bad closeout because he goes right out to Amir and Amir's able to drive past him, but he ran him off the three-point line right into a Duthiero, and a Duthiero taking one for the team. Now James Westfall and Dr. Kenneth Noisewater got the offensive foul, but it's because Trey Mitchell ran Norchad Amir off the three-point line, and Miami 0 of 4 from three in the second half. They've only hit four threes on the game they're four of 15 and this is a team that hits 11 per game that's a big part of their offense they shoot 46 percent from three in this game only 26 percent well, before the break an offensive foul on North Chad O'Meer who has fouled out with 20 rough night for the Hurricanes a great night for the Wildcats with about seven and a half to play. And this young man has stolen the show. Reed Shepard. The arrow. Shot clock down to five. That's a rarity for Kentucky. Shepard wants to drive it, kick it out. Edwards trying to get it off. Did he in time? He swishes it in. He got it. They're going to take a look, but it might have been on his fingertips on the release. But a great pass by Reed Shepard on that drive. If it was still in his hand, it was just rolling off his fingertips. Yeah, see, it's still still in his hand. Awfully close. 
Kentucky their possessions all season long have only averaged 15 seconds per they want to get it in the air this is rare for the shot clock to be any kind of a deciding factor but it was there they continue to take a look at it and if it were to count it'd be a three pointer but it looked like it was on his fingertips I thought it was yeah you you could almost see it in live action and it's it's better you know to call it a three they can go over and look at it will be a shot clock violation so no basket so it is disallowed about the only thing that's gone wrong for them all night and leading 83 to 60 against a team that brought a big chunk back from a final four appearance and is ranked number eight right now I mean, it's really remarkable Dave I mean, Kentucky's about to hang a hundred on Miami a team the Wildcats average at 94 on the season but they had what 85 or so against Kansas mm -hmm. in a game that Kentucky could have won you know, they're right there at the end just didn't finish it but they've finished everything in this game you talk about the bigs coming back however they do come back in what form how many how is that going to affect this Wildcat offense which is so impressive you know, I think it'll help it. It doesn't mean you're going to play those bigs the entire game. But it won't be like last year where you had Oscar Shibway locked down in the low post. And why wouldn't you uh, with, with Shibway? You couldn't you couldn't play him as a stretch five. But with Aaron Bradshaw coming in, he can knock down a three. He can play on the perimeter, can really move his feet. But just having that shot blocking element behind your defense to be able to wipe and erase any defensive mistake. It allows the perimeter players to be even more aggressive on the ball. Edwards at the line. His mom Ebony played professionally in Europe. And today is Giving Tuesday, a global day of giving. It's also the start of ESPN's V Week. We continue Jim Valvano's fight against cancer, and you can make a difference today by supporting cancer research needed now more than ever. If you're able, please give now at v.org slash donate. Remember, 100% of your donation goes to cancer research. That'll go the other way and offensive. Hey, AJ Casey just leaning into that screen a little bit too much. Maybe a little bit of frustration creeping in for Miami. I'll tell you what, we were watching Bradshaw work out today, and you're watching him and you're like, oh my. He was even better yesterday in practice. He wiped away a couple shots and some five on five. And you're going, that's what, that's the only thing that's missing for Kentucky right now. And John Calipari's always had shot blockers to be able to protect the rim. And he'll have a couple more coming in when they get healthy. Here's Mitchell. Reeves trying to thread the needle and stolen away by Poplar. And a whistle and a foul off the ball. With 619 to go, and it'll go against Edwards. And a couple of possessions in a row, Kentucky, they're trying to use the clock but still stay aggressive. You, know, you don't want to take the air out of the ball, but you know, Antonio Reeves trying to split those two defenders, and once you get the ball out in front of you, Wooga Poplar could knock it away. They got I think they got Justin Edwards on a hold, and it was essentially a breakaway foul where he wasn't making a play on the ball. So it's going to be a two shots in the ball situation. And Matthew Cleveland to the line where he's 81 percent. Byron Jarrett over to explain that. Clearly missed a pair. Okay, just everything out of sync right now for Miami. You know, Dave, ba basketball is a rhythm game. You, know, you want to establish your rhythm and disrupt your opponent's rhythm. And Kentucky has been the one to do both. You know, Kentucky's established their rhythm on the offensive end, and then they have disrupted everything that Miami wants to do. And especially by taking the Canes off the three-point line. You know, Miami has not been able to get anything, any momentum going with those threes that they normally hit. This was a five-point lead for Kentucky at halftime. Watson. 
They shut him down. Now up to 24 for the Cats. Reed Shepard calling out the horn set. Dillingham scoops it up and in. As he sliced inside. What a great play by Dillingham to come to the ball. That wasn't Reed Shepard's best pass, but he cut the distance down and caught it on the run. Scoop shot by Poplar. He's been the consistent offense tonight for the Canes. With 19, came in averaging 18. He has not had a whole lot of help. As Kentucky mops up here, one of the things they want to get, Miami's going to go after the ball, so shot fakes and ball fakes will be impressive. Now the three goes down here by Ron Dillingham. Who is making 50%, 14 out of 28 coming into the game. And you can bring Dillingham off the bench and he can get you 18, 20 and heat up in a hurry. Can't call him microwave, that's old technology. Right. Casey Short. And Dillingham will wait here under five minutes to go. Now he'll drive. Mitchell, two more. 91 for Kentucky. Just a simple open side pick and roll. Nobody there to pick up the roller. And a great decision by Rob Dillingham. Among a lot of great decisions by this Kentucky team. And you can see why John Calipari loves coaching this group. He does not have to coach effort. Yeah, he was saying today practice, just go play basketball. Man, have they done that. No defender in the corner. Nobody can tag the roll. Just easy basketball and another great decision by Kentucky. 25 to 8 in assists. Wow. Kentucky has made Miami into individual playmakers. So looking at largest wins against the AP top 10 under John Calipari. 2014 erasing Kansas by 32. 2012. Knocking off Florida, but handing it to Miami here tonight, just laying it on thick. Hey, Saturday, don't miss all the excitement leading up to the 2023 SEC Championship game. Beginning with Marty and McGee at noon Eastern, followed by SEC Nation and one whole crew ready to bring you the previews, the latest news. Get you ready for the big game between top-ranked Georgia and number eight Alabama. What a win for Bama over the weekend. And then after the champ is crowned, join the SEC football final crew. Full post game reviews coming up at 8 o'clock Eastern, both right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Did you watch that Alabama Auburn football game? I watched every second of it, and I, I thought Alabama was beaten like four times. Unbelievable. It was unbelievable. The same sight of the kick six. Yes. And they get the corner touchdown. Incredible. That series continues. To be legendary. And that's one where you take the pass interference penalty. Oh, it's only 15 yards. No kidding. 91 62. Second half threes, Kentucky making 78%. Really didn't shoot it all that well from three point land in the first half, but man, second half. Lights out. Well, they've won every battle in this game. They're winning the turnover battle. It's 16 to 9 and points off turnovers. They're winning the paint battle 46 28. And the fast break numbers are brutal for Miami 23 to 7 in favor of Kentucky. Fourth and foul there on Trey Mitchell, but Chris, he's been passing the ball so well tonight. What a remarkable journey that he's come from UMass to Texas to West Virginia and Kentucky. And I asked him about the journey, and he said, I've learned something each spot I went. When I was at UMass, I had success, but then it led to complacency. I needed to find some place to challenge myself. So then I went to Texas, but there I had personal struggles. But it taught me about faith. It taught me how to find my identity. That then led him to West Virginia. He said, that was a chance for me to be close to home. But when I was there, it taught me about making connections with people that were from all over the country. And then I got an opportunity to come to Kentucky. And I took everything that I learned in that journey, and it taught me how to lead. And when we were talking to Coach Cal earlier today, OB, he said he might be the most impactful transfer in the country, not just because of what he does on the hardwood, but the way he leads this group of freshmen. He's played that way tonight. You know, the leadership, the passing, unselfishness. He's got 14 points, five rebounds, seven assists, 
two blocks and a steal. In traffic, smooth shot by Christian Watson. 6'7 sophomore for the Canes. And four minutes to go. Kentucky trying to make a run at 100. Reeves with it. And really, Kentucky is treating the clock as their friend. They're going to burn 20 seconds off of every 30 second shot clock before they get going. Dillingham. Shepherds open in the corner. Rebound picked off by the Canes. You no, know, Kentucky's coming off 118 points against Marshall. That's the most for the Cats in a Calipari era. Last time Kentucky had back-to-back 100-point -back games was 2016. So maybe some special brewing here in Lexington again this year. Kip, thank you very much. Back in Lexington. It has been all Wildcats tonight since the second half got underway for sure. First half was competitive. And Miami was right there, only down by five. A second half, Kentucky has run away and hit 91-66. And one of the most impressive things for Kentucky, 25 assists on 35 made field goals, only eight turnovers. As a team, they have a three-to-one assist turnover ratio. They have a quick step and finish that. And John Calipari not happy because Dillingham shot went up and somebody hit the backboard. And Dillingham's been really good in this game. He's got eight assists, not a single turnover to go with his 12 points. Before that miss, Kentucky was shooting 75% in the second half. Illusion in the lane and a foul on Kentucky. But the play of the game without question, and they put it up on the big board here for everyone to see at Rupp Arena was Jay Bill absolutely murdering that ice cream. Can't hide talent, Dave O'Brien. <laughs> that was a beauty. Now John Calipari trying to get the crowd not to chant. They're chanting overrated, which I never understood. When you're beating somebody, you want them as rated as high as possible because it says something better about you. 2.50 to go. Yeah, he's exhorting them to please don't do that. He coaches the team. He coaches the crowd. Watson at the line. Makes it 91-68. Shepard with the lane opening up. Nicely done there. As they press on toward 100, and he has 21 points. He says, the ability to make so many great decisions, but he's really impressive on the defensive end. He's a great help defender, and his hands are spectacular. Good pass. And the slam by Burks. Middle of the floor, and that's nine assists now. Not a single turnover for Rob Dillingham. That's something when he looks back over the game tape, Laren in particular, I'm sure is going to point out over and over again. There have been a lot of pretty easy shots like that Kentucky's created where the lane has opened up. And Kentucky will control the rebound. 95 points. Trying to make it back to back 100 point games. And Dillingham, the freshman, will set it up. Now he'll fire it. But they have so many players that can dribble, pass, and shoot on the floor. Kentucky is really dangerous on the offensive end. George back for Watson and a triple. Around and out. Rebound is going to be up and in by Nwoko. And For such a young team, Dave, to follow the game plan as well as Kentucky has in this game. It's been really impressive to watch. And this was an utter dismantling of a good Miami team in this second half. Dillingham inside the three, can't connect. Watson with a rebound. So Miami about to lose their first of the year. They will go to five and one as Watson fills up a three. Kentucky will improve to six and one. 
the one impressive performance tonight by Reed Shepard our continental tire player of the game 21 points five rebounds tonight passed the ball defended so well he did everything I think mom and dad can exhale now off the back iron can't hit it oh, they can just run out the clock and allow this great big crowd to celebrate well they were celebrating from jump street tonight a raucous environment really deafening in here in that first half in particular and a great win for Kentucky as they pummel number eight Miami 95 to 73 so many different contributors but an outstanding execution of a game plan by Kentucky. The Wildcats roll tonight here against the Miami Hurricanes. For my partners, Chris Budden and Jay Billis, I'm Dave O'Brien. We say so long tonight from Lexington.